I shouldn't have eaten all that food yesterday. But it was Sunday. Like, who doesn't eat all that food that is presented to them on a Sunday? Oh, now, my stomach is still full. My jeans don't want a button. I'm gonna try, gonna try, gonna try. Work till I die, till I die, till I die. I'm gonna fail and get up, cause I'm not giving up on my dream. Hey, beautiful people, welcome back to my channel. I'm Kapana Shimange, and this is How I Do Things, the show where you send me your questions and I let you know how I would do things. Now, you can take it as entertainment or use it as advice. Take it, don't take it, use it. Don't use it at all. Do what you will with it, darling. Listen, I am no professional. No professional at all. I'm just letting you know what I would do if I was in your shoes. So when it comes to Sunday lunch, seven colors, you know, all of them, rainbow of food on the table. Just delicious, multi-leveled, just aromatic, hearty, soulful food that makes you so full that you need to wear like a loose dress or else you're just going to show the bulge. You're gonna have a food baby, okay? Today I'm going to show you a Sunday meal that is healthy, but still hearty and filling. A plate of beautiful saucy prawns, some brinjal curry for the vegetarians, a spicy rice, a herby, aromatic rice fried in a very light and beautiful way, and a salad on the side to complete all the colors of the rainbow and to have a beautiful Sunday lunch. Now you can always take one of these dishes and make it for whatever meal you have at home. That good heartiness coming to you right now. Hey beautiful people, it is Sunday and I am making Sunday lunch. I am making fried rice with nice little bits in it. I'm also making a beautiful spicy prawn dish and some eggplant with a few little extra salads on the side so join me as we make this beautiful sunday lunch so let's start with the tomato and herb prawns which needs some tomatoes some onions some italian herb mix and some salt to taste so we're going to start with a tablespoon of olive oil that we're going to add to a medium high heat pan we're going to be using frozen prawns for this so no need to defrost so once we have finely chopped our yellow or white onion we're going to add that into the medium high pan that already has the olive oil we're going to continue to stir this until the onions are completely translucent once they're translucent we're going to then add the italian herb mix so we're going to just add this in and continue to stir so that the herbs let off that a beautiful aroma that they have this is a beautiful aromatic dish so this is the key that makes it smell and taste like it does once that is all cooked in we're going to add in our pureed or chopped tomatoes into the dish you need about two of these if you want to add an extra one go right ahead it just makes it a little bit more saucy and so beautiful so once we've mixed it in we're just going to let it simmer for a little while and add our salt as much as you need depending on your taste once the salt has stirred in we're going to add in our frozen prawns and stir those in as well so that they start to let out those juices once the frozen prawns start to let out those juices you'll start to see that it will soften up and and mix beautifully into your tomato mix. So I'm going to stick it into the oven at a 180 degrees preheated oven and once I remove it whether I have the feta cheese or not this dish is aromatic it's got that beautiful tomato herb taste and it's amazing with either rice or salad you can put some feta cheese on top of this as you toast it but I'm not gonna put that in I'm gonna leave it for a little while and I'm only gonna stick it in the oven about 15 minutes before we actually eat and then I'm gonna preheat it. So I'm gonna preheat the oven when it's really close to being time to serve the food, then I'm going to stick this in and let it toast just a little bit. Now I'm going to stick it into the oven for about 
10 to 15 minutes or until I am satisfied with how soft the prawns are. But when I pull it out, I have this amazing tomato and herb prawn dish. Beautiful. Now let's move on to that fried rice. This is definitely my favorite favorite dish from this past Sunday's meal. So how you make it is that you're first going to soak the rice for 30 minutes on the side without any heat and once you've done that you're going to put it on the heat for about five minutes so that the starch comes out. We're going to remove that from the heat and drain. We're going to add more water and add a little bit of salt and we're going to boil for another 10 minutes. Once we're done boiling it for 10 minutes, we're going to drain it once again. This time, we're going to drain it completely dry. So we're going to rinse it, make sure that all the starch is completely gone. I like to stir a little bit to make sure all of that starch is out and drain the water completely. So there's no need to measure your water just as long as at the end, you've completely drained out all of that excess water. This is where I like to grab my spoon or my spatula spoon just to make sure that all the water is out. And once I've drained this, I'm going to set this rice to the side. Now I'm going to grab a medium deep non-stick pan. I'm going to add my oil and then finely chopped carrots and finely chopped shallots. And I'm going to fry these until they are soft. Now you're going to need about three small shallots and two medium carrots that I'm going to finely chop and add this to one tablespoon of olive oil. And I'm going to continuously stir this for about a 10 minute period until it is cooked. This whole process is going to take me about 10 minutes because it does take a little bit of time for the shallots to remove that sour taste that they have. But once the carrots and the shallots have mixed in nicely and we know that they are cooked, we can then move on to the next step, which is to add our drained rice. It's important to use a non-stick pan because when you fry rice, you don't want that rice to stick to the pan. So reach for your rice, add it into the cooked carrots and shallots and continue to stir it in until you can see that everything is beautifully stirred together. Now this is a dish that requires that extra bit of love so don't feel shy to stand by the pot and stir for as long as you feel comfortable. Now my favorite part of this dish is the sweet basil smell and the taste. I love it it's the aromatic smell that just makes me fall in love with this dish so sprinkle it on top as you are mixing in that fluffy white rice with your carrots and your shallots Once you're satisfied, you're then going to add some salt to taste, give it one last little stir, and then you can plate your dish. I absolutely love this one. That's why I have to give it a little wiggle to make sure it smells amazing. If there's any one of these dishes that you try, I definitely recommend that you try this one. Did I tell you guys how tricky it is to cook and film at the same time? It's stressful, so stressful, stressful. But it's fine. We are going to stay calm and we're gonna make it, okay? We're gonna make it. We're definitely going to make it, okay? Let's do this. <laughs> and finally, we move on to our third and final dish, which is the vegan brinjal and mushroom curry love this one it's my husband's favorite so we're going to first start by soaking the brinjals or the eggplants 
in some salt water so we're just going to give them a salt water bath to remove that sourness from the brinjals some people love the brinjals as they are without that sourness but what i like to do is just cut them in half and score them or just basically cut little strips or lines in the halves to make sure that the salt gets into it be careful when you're doing this you don't have to hold it up try and hold it against a cutting board when you do this to avoid any nicks or cuts that you may get from scoring the brinjals you're going to leave it in its salt water bath for about 30 minutes and then you're going to remove it and and soak off any of that salt water you just want to make sure it's completely drained of that salt water before you spoon it out it can be a little bit difficult to spoon out brinjal so you can just take a knife and cut off the skin now i'm going to cube the brinjal to make sure that it's in nice little cubes when i cook it i'm going to add one tablespoon of olive oil and once it is nice and hot i'm going to add in the rest of the cubed brinjals and i'm going to fry these until they're beautifully browned now this pan is at a medium high heat and i'm going to leave it this way until i see that the brinjals have started to cook they will reduce in size and they will become brown in a cup i'm going to add one teaspoon of turmeric one teaspoon of smoked chili flakes one teaspoon of garlic powder, another teaspoon of vegetable stock, a teaspoon of white sauce powder or cornstarch, or you can use some flour if you want to keep this completely vegan. Once my brinjal has browned and cooked, I'm then going to add some mushrooms. These can either be buttons or they can be halved mushrooms, as many as you feel comfortable with. If you want the dish to be mainly mushroom, then add a little bit more to make sure that you balance out the ratio between the brinjal and the mushrooms. I'm going to continue to stir and cook this until the mushrooms let out a little bit of water. That's how I know it's a little cooked. And then I'm going to add a spoon of curry now i'm using spicy medium curry and i did let it slip a little so once you add that in and you fry it you'll start to smell it in the air and if it's a little too much for you you can cover it with a lid and cook for two minutes open up the lid stir and then cover it up one more time and let it cook for another two minutes finally you'll see that the the mushrooms have let out all of the beautiful water and the taste from the curry is beautifully cooked you're then going to take your liquid mix that has the turmeric that has the vegetable stock and the water and you're going to add that to your dish once you stir that together you'll start to see that it thickens beautifully you're going to let that simmer for about two to three minutes while you rinse and chop up some swiss chard or some spinach now i'm going to sprinkle that on top of the pot and i'm just going to cover it up and let that simmer for another two to three minutes once the Swiss chard has melted in or it's become a little smaller, you will see that it's super easy to stir in. So I'm going to start stirring in small little circles, covering it up with the sauce to make sure that it goes nicely into the dish. Now you don't want it to bundle up. So stirring it in small circles, make sure that it is nicely separated in between all of the sauces. Now it is at this point where you can serve the dish. You're just going to add a little bit of salt to taste and it is ready for you to serve. You want to serve this dish soon after adding in your Swiss chard so it doesn't overcook. When you add in that spinach, try and make sure that you're adding it in about five minutes before you finally dish up your brinjal and mushroom curry. Foodie time. Foodie time. What are you eating now? This is what you're eating. You are eating chicken, pasta, ne? not too creamy. Ne? And then this is wine. That is the rice. My salad. Potatoes. And vegan brinjal curry. I hope that you guys enjoyed that one. That Sunday meal went in, especially that rice. I love the aromatic rice. And I think I'll definitely be making that fried aromatic rice 
over and over and over again with different dishes. I could eat it all by itself. I hope that you guys enjoyed this one. Give it a big thumbs up and let me know what other food dishes do you want to see. If you want it to be themed or if you want to see things that you have tried or have been thinking about or need some ideas for a date night or whatever it is that you have, send them through to me. Until next time, beautiful people, I'm Kapane Shimange and this is How I Do Things. Hey gorgeous, thank you so much for watching the video and thank you for making it right until the end. Now if you have not subscribed, click on this space right here to subscribe right now and feel free to binge watch. Head over to my website www.kopanoshimange.com and download my new ebook, The 7 Hacks to Boost Your Confidence. Until next time. Mwah.